Okay, bro. Thanks for joining me, BJ. Hey, bro. Thanks for having me. Um, nah, cool, man. Yeah, um, I've been wanting to talk to you for a little bit. Um, I guess what with the brace card coming up, that really piqued my interest. But I saw you uh, made a foray into the uh, social media with making your new uh, um, uh, like athlete page. Um, you said yeah. you got some a bit of advice on that. Can can you run us through that? Yeah, bro. Um, so I've just uh, just finished up training over at a uh, Tiger Tiger Muay Thai in Phuket, and uh, I was uh, lucky enough to to put in a bit of work with Dan Hooker. Yep. And he's sort of sort of uh, we're talking about international fights, and I've had quite a few fights, but they've all been sort of in New Zealand. Yep. I sort of asked, you know, why is that? And then, um, first thing he asked is, do you have an athlete page? I was like, nah, bro, I don't really get into it. And then. And that's straight away, so well, there you go. That's, that's the first thing you need. So, uh, yeah, bro, you're not going to turn down advice from Dan Hooker. He's wherever Kiwi wants to be. So, yeah. I listen yeah. to everything, man. Yeah, that's true. I hear um, a, a few guys um, talk about how Dan Hooker's road to, you know, the UFC and, and sort of paving the way and they want to follow in his footsteps. You know, did he have much more advice for you when you were there? Yeah, bro, heaps. Like, um, there's probably. The, that was where I got most of my my benefit from there. I just kind of a lot of the times kind of just hang around I mean, him and his crew and just listen, you know, try to sponge and absorb it. They're uh, they've got such an intelligent uh, approach to the game, always studying, always. Yeah, man, I was uh, in my notebook and tried to get as much as I could. Awesome, man, awesome. Well, let's um for a lot of a lot of guys on 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 my page and and for me also, you you're a brand new face. To, to us, um, we did watch you fight at the last brace and heard your name being kicked around quite a bit on the local scene, mate. Just just tell us how you got into the fight game and where you train. Yeah, bro, I've, uh, yeah, I've been fighting for a while, eh? So I started when I was, uh, started with Thai boxing when I was about 14. So I'm uh, 27 now. Yeah. So yeah, it's been, <laughs> been a while, but yeah, I'm pretty low key. But um, yeah, just went from there. Did that for a few years. And then uh, I was just training back home in, in the Naki, and I went to uni in Palmy. And oh, nice. uh, MMA was kind of the new the new thing. Yep. And uh, a fella called uh, Rex Redden had just bought the first cage into New Zealand and then was just starting shows. So, yeah, I was, I was keen to jump in on that. So that would have been about 2007 when I had my first, first pro MMA fight. And it's just kind of been on and off from there, bro. Yeah, cool, man. It's a bit of a history lesson right there. Um, first cage in yeah, New Zealand. Yeah. Um, how did how did that transition? So you said you had many. It was a Muay Thai kickboxing fights, and then you what? You just tried MMA one day and fell in love with it, or or how did that actually work out? Yeah, bro. I think just uh, just kind of like the the progression. You know, you always want to be doing the kind of the, the scariest thing out, so it starts, you know, modified kickboxing and then Thai boxing with elbows, and then then there's this whole new uh, new facet with the ground and the ground and pound on it. Yeah, I just couldn't resist, bro. And uh, nice. uh, unfortunately, I jumped in probably too early. Uh, no jujitsu, no nothing. So okay. it was a, a steep learning curve, a few, a few uh, submission losses on the early record, but yeah. All right, man. You're talking about that record. How many fights? How many MMA fights have you had up to this point? Um, I know you, you're headlining the brace card now, so so you must have a bit of experience and, and, a, and a good bit of movement going going into this brace. Uh, yeah, bro. Like uh, like my shoot off record says, I've had 12 fights, but there's yeah a, a lot of a lot of stuff that hasn't been on record. One of the the main promotions I fight for is uh, the Shuriken up in New Zealand. Yep. Uh, up in Auckland, yep. sorry. They run a lot of shows, and uh, yeah, for some reason their fights aren't recorded there. But um, this will be this will be my twentieth fight, twentieth uh, pro MMA fight this weekend. So massive, yeah, that's been around a bit, I guess. That's great, yeah. Um, and headlining for Brace, which is well, the great thing about it is is it's on Fight Pass, so so potentially anyone in the whole world can watch it quite easily if they've got the Fight Pass. I mean, what kind of feeling do you get? Um, or is there any pressure or on you doing something like that, fighting on the main event and, and trying to, you know, show your best self? Oh, uh, nah, bro, like, I just just pure excitement, man. It's, it's awesome. I was, I was stoked, Brace, come. Um, 
As soon as I heard it was coming to New Zealand, I was emailing Matt Kane, basically harassing him. Yep. Every couple of weeks, yeah, I wanted in, and it's a, it's cool, like you say. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty undercover, not a lot of people sort of have heard of me, so it's just a perfect chance to try and get my name out there and try to get some bigger fights. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's working out perfectly for you. Um, the 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 brace. I mean, the now on the Facebook. I mean, your page is, is getting likes, hand over fist. Um, tell us a bit about where where you train and um, who you train with at the moment. Apart from whether yeah, you're at Phuket or, or Tiger. Yeah, bro. So I'm based in a uh, base in Hawke's Bay. Um, I train. So my main training base is the combat room Hawke's Bay. So we're a, a jiu-jitsu based gym. Um, my head trainer is Kim Eden. He's a he's a black belt under Vanderson Perez, who's uh, the headquarters in Wellington. So that's my main base. And then I work my stand up uh, at Nate, Nate Boxing under a pad man, uh, Ryan, Ryan Whitaker. I've okay. met a lot with my stand up. Nice, nice. So what what um what 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 piece of MMA do you like the most? Are you still in love with striking, or have you found that you love a bit of grinding, a bit of wrestling, or you know you love putting a sub on someone now? Yeah, bro. Yeah, I love it all. Like when I first started, I, I just I avoided jujitsu like the plague, <laughs> but uh. <laughs> Uh, it only gets you so far, bro. So uh, I took kind of two years off and focused solely on jiu-jitsu. True. Um, my, head, my, my head coach, uh, Kamina, is obsessed with jiu-jitsu, so he's always talking about it, and I guess uh, uh, it's a bit contagious. So, yeah, I love love the jits now, bro. Like yeah. it all. Mean, mean. Um, and, then, and then a bit of training. How much training have you done overseas? Like you mentioned Tiger and, and hanging out with, um, with Dan Hangman. Like... It, it obviously, you know, it's not an easy thing. It costs you a, a bit of coin. How much time can you spend overseas at this point? Uh, bro, I'm trying to do it as much as I can. Like, um, you know, uh, just, you know, when you're on Facebook and you're looking and see all these other fighters getting to go overseas and experience it, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of a bit depressing. Like, oh, man, I'm, I'm stuck here in a full-time job and don't really, but, yeah, I just bit, bit the bullet, bro. Just going to chase the dream now, so, uh, I'm just kind of working, working part time sort of thing, and uh, going to make uh, fighting my my primary focus and try to get overseas as often as I can. Nice, nice. That's one of the things. Um, Kai said that he really was one of the things that he had to decide that he was going to do it full time, and it seems like it's um, working out for him now. How much training do you get to do? You get to train a couple of times a day when you're working part time at the moment. Uh, yeah, bro, I was training uh, twice a day even when I was working full-time, so I'll get up at 5.36 in the morning. Um, okay. my, my strength and conditioning coach uh, lives just down the road from me, so he's got a gym at his house, so I'll go there every morning, work out, and then, then evenings do my, my skill stuff, either jiu-jitsu or boxing. So, yeah, t- uh, twice a day, bro, six days a week. It's, yeah, yep. just making sure it gets done. Nice, nice. And um, I, I see you posted up a uh, a bit of a video clip with your, with your missus there, a bit of sparring at home. Um, that, yeah. must, that must really help, like having a partner that's not only just supportive, but can actually like participate, you know, and, and, and feel that journey with you, you know. How does that, how does that feel? Oh, yeah, bro, it's awesome. So, yeah, Alicia, she's had uh, one corporate boxing fight, and she's... Uh... Oh, yeah. Looking at having their second one soon, and she wants to get in to do some kickboxing. I haven't um haven't convinced her on the jiu-jitsu yet. She's uh, <laughs> not too keen on the close contact, but yeah, bro, it's mean. So kind of a couple of times a week, we'll just get together, just whenever the mood strikes, move the sofa out of the lounge, and um tap the shin pads on and just drill for an hour. So it's yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah, just whenever you want to fight over the remote, you just put the gloves on instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, she, she's uh, getting pretty pretty good now, though, so yes, yeah, she can have the remote. <laughs> cool, man. Um, so you're fighting this weekend at Brace. Um, how is your weight cut going? Uh, do you cut much weight? Um, you know, does the how do you feel about uh, the weight cut at the moment? A lot of thing in the in the media and stuff. We have the UFC's changed times, try and accommodate and soften that blow. Give us your thoughts on the weight cut. Uh, bro, I used to struggle with it really bad. I used to try to get as heavy as I can and then try to drop as much as I could close to the show. Always be pushed for time, borderline, missing weight, and uh, just, bro, it was no good. I'd uh, gas, gas, and uh, struggle, but 
Right now, where I woke up this morning, at 78.3. So that'll be 77 by Friday. So, oh. uh, yeah, it's going mean. Yeah, so, that's sweet. I, I find it's a benefit. Uh, you know, I've, I've done that probably my last five fights and coming into the third round, plenty of energy, bro. Just, you know, enjoy the fight week too. Not yeah. focusing on uh, starving. Just, yeah, I, I like it that way. Yeah, that's, um, it, there's two fighters, there's two sides to it, isn't there? There's the guys that try and stay to the, to like optimal, close to the weight, and then there's those other guys that want to come in heavy, and it seems to affect them, but then there's some seem to get away with it. Yeah, bro, I, th- I think it's a fine line, eh? You just got to find what works for you. Like, a, you look at, at Rob Whitaker, welterweight, he, he was massive, but... Man, since he's gone up to middleweight, he, he's killing it, you know. Mm. He's top 10 in the world. Yeah. Uh, obviously, that's probably a bit away from him. Maybe uh, Walter Weight was just too too light. So I think it's just a matter of finding what works for your body and, and sticking to that, you know. Yeah, yeah, well, totally. Uh, it must take, you know, a few fights, a few goes at it. I mean, if if and if you're... Like, if you've been doing it one way for a while, until someone tells you or, or something, maybe you miss weight or something, that you wouldn't really want to change it, would you? Yeah, bro, yeah, exactly. Or or you might, you, sometimes you even think that's, like for me, kind of being tired and, and hitting the sauna for hours and that before, I thought that's how you're supposed to feel, you know? Yeah. You come Saturday morning, I'm still not not great. We're now, yeah, now I'm a box of birds. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, enjoying the fight, like, uh, like enjoying the lead up, and then feeling refreshed the next day. Um, absolutely. Your your opponent is it Hennan? Is that how we say it? Hennan Seco from Brazil. Yeah, right, yeah. Born in Brazil, but he's yeah. fighting out in New Zealand. I I I'll be yeah. honest, I haven't heard his name either. Um, what what are his strengths? So, and how do you see that fight going? I see he's an ace on the ground, bro. He's very slick on the ground. Um. He fights out of Queenston. Uh, oh, to be honest, I'm a fan, bro. He, uh, yeah, I've watched a lot of his fights and some some beautiful subs and that. Yeah. But um, yeah. So yeah, there's no no bad blood or anything, and yeah, I'm a fan. But yeah, I'm, I'm still gonna win on Saturday. Yeah, mate. <laughs> so that must be cool. Like, so you're a fan, you know of him, and and you know what he's good at, and you just really want to test yourself. I guess that's how you feel going in. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Like, uh, I, I'm just doing this to kind of grow my own sort of path and my own future. I'm not trying to wreck anyone else's. <laughs> just got to, you know, do, do what i got to do to keep moving ahead. Yeah, yeah you do. And you, you t- totally come across as, like, a nice guy. Um, and, and in this day and age where, you know, we've even got Dan Hooker's calling out, you know, former champions and, and oh. trying to do what they, they can do to get those fights. How do you think, you know, will you just keep going that nice guy route, you know, and grinding and showing showing your worth in the cage? Uh, yeah, bro, uh, it's, it's tough, bro. Like, uh, Dan, Dan hit the nail on the head when I was over there. He said, close mouths, don't get dead. And uh, it's true, you know, like, until, uh, if I didn't set up a Facebook page of that, I'd still be, you know, no one would uh, really know who I am. So it's part of the parcel, bro, I think. You've got to make a bit of noise or people will just overlook you, so... I still think I'll, I'll still be myself, yep. and I'll still stick true to who I am, but yeah, I'll try to be, be a bit more vocal on the social media scene and, and that kind of thing. Yeah, man. Yeah, it, it, it helps for sure. I mean, um, as soon as, say say for me, as soon as I, like I watched your fight last week, and then I look you up, and I, and I see you on Sherdog or whatever, and then if I don't find a, like a, a Facebook thing or an Instagram thing to follow, then you sort of, you fall back in in, in, in my mind sort of thing. I, I remember you from the fight, but to, to follow you like today, I see you, you know, with your missus and stuff, it's cool. It's it's a really good way to connect with um, and get more fans. Yeah, yeah, bro, exactly. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, like, I've been doing it for years. Like, I've been following other fighters. Like, uh, you know, watch Damian Brown on the UFC first yeah. thing, like his page, get, to get a bit of insight. Yeah. Oh, he is what he's doing, but yeah, you know, just a bit slow myself to kind of cotton on to what yeah. needs to be done. Well, we're here now. Um, yeah, what else? Um, so, do you enjoy watching any of the fighting, like around the world, the UFC, Ryzen, and and Legend FC, anything like that? 
Yeah, bro. Like uh, everyone that's into MMA likes watching the UFC, but yeah, bro. Uh, I loved Rizm the other night, bro. And wow. I was buzzing, bro. Yeah, it was me, <laughs> eh? Yeah, bro. Like uh, yeah, when I started uh, like kickboxing at like K1, the K1 GP was, yep. you know, that, that was like watching the All Blacks to me, and yep. it's kind of similar. You now the Japanese know how to put on a show, bro. They know how to get you excited. Yeah, it was totally like that. I, I'm still thinking about it. Even though there was another UFC that day, I can't stop thinking about the Ryzen show. That was, that yeah, was right. later that night. I, I didn't go to sleep till even the credits or something was coming up, and I was still waiting yeah. to see if something was going to happen in the K, in the ring. Uh, what was yeah, the right. highlight for you? Uh, obviously, the the Mirko fight. <laughs> Every, everyone that's an old school MMA loves Mirko. Yeah. I, I stayed up for the the Andy Sauer fight though, because you know that's kind of like that's old school too, you know, striker versus grappler kind of yep. match. Yep. Old school, you know, chucking the K1 in guys, seeing how they um K1 guys in, seeing how they handle the MMA. So that that was cool too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mirko was was a highlight, and then afterwards, obviously, yeah, right. it was it was a bit of debacle. You know, we need some um some translators in with Heath Herring and stuff, maybe. But um, it's still you could tell what was going on. It was a bit awkward for them both. It was really cool to watch. Yeah, right. Like, it was a circus, an absolute circus. But that's part of the that's part of the appeal, eh? You just yeah. know what's going on here. Totally. Even uh, even after the crazy horse fight, bro. Ah, uh, yeah. Just seeing, man, what is going to unfold. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that was great. And all the you know the walk-ins, just the theatre oh, of yeah, it bro. all. It was and the, just the it's like. It's like Pride 2.0, which is just fantastic. Yeah, yeah, bro. And uh, it's awesome to see a Gracie back in there too, doing. Oh man, yeah, yeah that was doing cool. It. The pressure on Cron. Well, he said it himself. Uh, you know, his older brother used to have the pressure, but um, he had to, he had to take that on board. Um, the other thing that's cool with Ryzen is they are uh, affiliated or associated with Bellator MMA. Yeah, right. And there's some cross promotion there. Um. Recently, we've seen, you know, Chael, Sonnen, uh, Rory McDonald go to Bellator. Potentially, they could also, you know, do some crazy fights in Japan with Ryzen. How do you see, like, it's almost the monopoly of the UFC might be starting to crumble. You think that's a good thing for MMA? Uh, yeah, bro, I think it's good for the fighters. Uh, lots of kind of competition can, can push their rights up a little bit. But also... Because, yeah, I, I really enjoy the other promotions. The stuff about the UFC that I'm kind of not fussed on now, like the uniform and there, that's taken away a bit of the entertainment. But um, the only concern I have, bro, is where we might get to a stage like in boxing where the two best guys are taking kind of five years to line a fight up. Where, um, you know, the UFC are guaranteed. If there's a number one contender, there's a champ. That they're going to be fighting pretty soon, you know, which is that's always good. Yeah, no, that's those are that's a perfect point. Yeah, I'm I'm sort of a, the only other thing I liked about Ryzen, which it made the UFC look a bit regimented, and like you know you had the flashy walkouts and, and the the big fat dude versus the old you know yeah, striker, bro. and it was just more fun as opposed to you know these two like super fighters always knocking heads. It, you didn't know what was going to happen really. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Like, I, I can see, you know, UFC trying to go down the, the path of making it, you know, like a, a perfect, legitimate sport like soccer or yeah. rugby, but uh, I kind of find some of the appeal in it that it's not. It's not for your average Joe, you know. It's a little bit yeah, yeah a little bit edgy, which is, yeah, I, I like that part of it. Yeah, well, on that point, how many people, you know, that you've talked to, they say, what do you do, bro? What do you do in your spare time? Or what, what do you do for work? And you say, well, I'm a... I'm an MMA fighter, and you know what reactions are you getting uh, uh, these days as opposed to say five, ten years ago? Yeah, bro, heaps different, man. Like uh, I, I used to just uh, avoid it, like just <laughs> wouldn't tell people I was, you know, because you'd they'd either look at you funny or you'd just start getting sort of like kind of just silly questions that it would make you kind of feel uncomfortable answering. Like you kind of don't want to tell that person, like, oh, it's like completely off. What are you up to? <laughs> But you kind of want to be polite, but yeah, so I just kind of lie. I was like, ah, oh, no, nah, man, I'm just a girl, uh, just, a, just a student. 
Yeah. Well, you know, the lady in the petrol station will ask me about my black eye. I'll just say, oh, you got it from rugby on Saturday or, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. But what about now? Now, yeah. Bro, heaps different, man. Like, uh, like I say, even, yeah, just I'll, I'll talk to people about it and just be, yeah. Everyone's heaps more educated. Everyone understands it better. And it's a... Uh, Pages like you guys are running that's that's helping it too, you know. People kinda can see and watch and and, and learn more, so it's good. Yeah, it is it is good. It's way more educated now. I remember back then it would be that's you know, what was I into and it was like I'd have to say basically I'd have to say cage fighting because if I said MMA, anything like that, they just couldn't wrap their head around it. And they'd be like, Oh yeah, karate and stuff and it's like it's yeah. it's, it's everything. Yeah, so so people either think you're like a you're a criminal <laughs> thing in the cage fighting, or they think you're running around and you know like a geese and so on PRs with ten year old kids sort of thing. So. Yeah. <laughs> but now yeah, people understand it now and it's it's good. It, it is much better. Um, who who else is on the card that we should be keeping our eye on? I know uh, Shane Young. Is I think maybe is he co-main and then we got Cole Davis is fighting as well. Is there anyone else we should be keeping our eyes on? Um, yeah, the first man that popped my head was going to be Shane Young. He he's exciting man. He he can uh, he can throw. Yeah. Um, Taneta, I've uh, I've done a, a bit of training with him. He's a real good kid and he uh, he works hard and uh, he he's been training up the storm. So yeah, I think he'll be good to watch him and him and uh, Pamal will. They'll throw it down, I think. So that'll be a good fight. Nice. Um, and Josh, Josh Henderson. If, if you watch the last, last brace, him and uh, Red Dog Greg, man, that fight was crazy. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, they went hell for Lewis. So I've, I've yeah done a bit of training with Josh too. So yeah, he he doesn't muck around. So that I think that'll be a good fight, man. And then the Gregor, they'll they'll butt heads, and it'll be uh yeah, man. It's just going to be who breaks first, I think. Awesome. Yeah, I can't wait. Our last brace was, was entertaining start to finish, especially, you know, with so many Kiwis. Just It's just, you know, we're rooting for them every every single fight almost, you know, except when they're fighting at each other. Yeah, bro, yeah. It was, yeah, it's awesome to get the promotion over here. Um, yep. and, uh, yeah, so for, uh, one of the biggest things I learned from from travelling and going to Tiger and is that, man, we're, we're right up there, you know. Uh, you know, we're we kind of isolated and have a pretty humble attitude, but yeah, yeah, Kiwis are right up there with the rest of the world. Mean, mean. All right, bro, before I let you go, I'll get a couple of predictions, man. My first one, well, my first one is not a prediction. It's like, do you think this fight should be happening anyway? Dan Hendo and Michael Bisping. Uh, <laughs> for, for, <laughs> for the entertainment factor, absolutely, for the story and that, but yeah, it's absolutely, bro, for entertainment. But uh, if you're going down a legitimate sport path, yep. there's no way Henderson should be competing for a title. You know, he's had no. one win and, and how many things. But, bro, I'm going to be tuning in to watch it. Yes. Yes. Have you got a prediction on who's going to take that out? Uh, I'm backing Bisping, bro. I'm, yep. I've always been a fan of Bisping. I like his kind of graft attitude, and I think he's sort of... He, he's good, man. He doesn't get full credit, but yeah, I think he's good. I think he'll be able to outbox Henderson and uh, wear him down. Yeah, yeah, that nah, perfect. Um, the other one, while we while we're talking about rankings and stuff again, is what was just uh, just announced today was Conor McGregor versus Eddie Alvarez at UFC 205. Another one that doesn't really make sense, except for on paper. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Any idea who's going to it, well, first of all, what do you think about fights like this? You know, big money fights, and how they affect you know the rest of the MMA uh, landscape. Uh, I like I like them, bro. Like man, like it gets you excited to tune in. You know, Nate Diaz, Conor McGregor didn't really make sense, but I was looking forward to it for months. You know, yep. it's, it's the entertainment business above all. I think and and put on the fights that will entertain people. I, I think it'll be good. Yeah, yeah, totally. I think it's. It makes it makes sense for money money wise definitely for the UFC it was a no brainer I think. Um, how do you see that fight going? Are you an Alvarez fan? Are you a Conor McGregor fan? Uh, I, yeah, I like them both, bro. I'm a massive Alvarez fan. His uh, his two fights with Chandler and Bellator are my my favourite of all time fights. He's, okay. Yeah, yeah, I love Eddie Alvarez. I like his style, but 
Yeah, I like McGregor too, so I can't really pick pick that one. Yeah, I think, yeah. You know, Alvarez might have a bit of size, but I think if McGregor can cut the cage and start landing body shots on him, I think he might wear him down a bit. Yeah, I'm I'm sitting on the fence, bro. Yeah, but it, like you said, it's exciting straight away. I think it's something to look forward to, yeah. and that that 205 New York card is totally stacked from top to bottom. Now. Yeah, bro. They had to. They had to do something big for that card. You know, they've been trying to get it, get it there for so so many years to finally get it. Yeah, it's huge. Would have been, yeah. Uh, yeah, would have been John Jones, but he's on a holiday at the moment. Um, before yeah. you go, bro, any any um, words you want to put out there to to some Kiwi fans, to your sponsors, anything like that? Yeah, well, I'd just like to do a, a shout out to Relocate Homes New Zealand. Um, uh, they've been backing me for a couple of years now, bro, and it's just helping massively with training, uh, funding trips overseas, and yeah, and you know, hel- uh, helping top up pay for fights. And yeah, they've been great, bro. So yeah, massive thanks, thanks to them. And um, yeah, just all the all the Kiwi fight fans, make sure you tune in to Brace. Yeah. Thanks for following, and uh, yeah, you won't you won't be disappointed. Man, bro, you got a prediction for your fight? Uh, we'll have to tune in on Saturday, bro. Yeah. No, no predictions. Yeah, no predictions. Is that something you 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 always don't do? No, nah, no. Nah, I've got like a little, you know, I have a game plan and a, yeah. and a way things are going to pan out in my head. But yeah, I like to let my uh, actions actions do the talking. Cool, man. I got one more, one more before we go. Quicksand, your your fighting name. Obviously, like now we know that you were uh, more into the striking before. How did you get quicksand? Uh yeah, my. Uh, my partner Alicia actually came up with it um, when because I've never had a nickname, and then Matt Kane sent through the contracts and Brace, and it had a nickname. My daughter to fill it out and fax it off to me, and she put it in because it kind of rhymes and yep. <laughs> hooks in and bland. And uh, she just reckons it's kind of my fighting style. I like to kind of take take the fight deeper and later. I've got good cardio, and I like to just kind of drown people and and wear them out. And that's when I come on strong. So yeah, I think it suits. Nice, bro. Nice that. Um... And one more, like, so that must feel great. So you're almost like you're trying to break your opponent is, is almost your fight style. Yeah, bro, absolutely. Training, fighting, that, that's what I enjoy, you know, where when you can hear their breathing getting heavy and you're still relaxed, there's no more satisfying feeling than that. <laughs> so, yeah, bro, absolutely. <laughs> mean, bro, uh, thanks for thanks for joining us, man. Thanks for your time and all the best with, with your, your end of your weight cut and all the best with the fight we'll all be watching. Sweet, brother. Thank you. Awesome, bro. Thanks, man.